everybody this video on jQuery is going to serve two purposes one is going to be showing you how to do these hide and slide toggle containers and you see this kind of functionality on YouTube and Facebook and Twitter a lot let's say if I'm in my comments section at YouTube and I slide that down you see when I click the subject line the whole thing slides down and it shows hidden content that was hidden in a container underneath the subject line just pushes everything down on the page pretty much okay so we'll show you how to do something like that and I'm going to be showing you how to go and get the jQuery library there's some things you can't do with jQuery that you must turn to for flash but there's also a lot of things that you can do on a web page that it's like standardized functionality now thanks to YouTube, Google, Facebook, and Twitter all having this kind of functionality on their sites and their sites being so popular, so many people being used to using this kind of functionality. It's just a good thing to know. So if, if you guys don't happen to know jQuery yet or work with jQuery yet, the second purpose of this video is to show you how to go to the jQuery website, download the latest version, I'm going to show you how to implement it into the root directory of your website so it's all ready to go. All you got to do is read their homepage, check a few things out, see how jQuery works, tutorials, all this stuff. But what I'm going to be showing you is how to grab the file, grab the code, and set it up in the root directory of your website so you're all ready to use it. I'm going to show you how to implement it as well in this tutorial where I'll show you how to do these hide and slide toggle containers like that. We gotta go to jQuery and grab the latest release. And you can use uh, previous releases. And actually I had this code working on version 1.3.2. And let's try it with 1.4.2 now. And when you're going to download it, there's one important thing to know. There's a production version and a development version. The development version is all the functions kinda laid out in a human viewable sort of way but it takes up a lot more space because there's the line breaks and the spaces and everything and if you get the production version you can see how much smaller it is in kilobytes and it's minified and gzipped and this is the development version which is the good human readable and editable version where you can further add to things there or try to understand what's going on in the code with this version the production version is what you want to use on your live website the development version is what you want to use if you want to develop the jQuery library any further or manipulate it for your needs. So what I'm going to do is grab the development version. You can grab either one you like and they'll work the same. So let's press download. And there's the file. I'm just going to control A, grab all that code, and copy it. And I'm going to go to Dreamweaver. And let's go to file new uh, JavaScript wherever that is right there and let's control V pop all that code right in there you can see there's all kind of stuff going on in that which handles all kind of things in JavaScript and the library is made to where if you have let's go back here the, Java, the jQuery library is made in such a way to where all you have to do is make function calls and send certain variables through those functions and the jQuery library is going to do things automatically for you. So we can go ahead and close this and like I said go ahead and check out their home page tutorials and all that good stuff. Okay now let's save this file save as and I'm just going to put it on my desktop I'm going to make a new folder. I'm going to call it my website. Inside that folder, I'm going to make another folder for housing any JavaScript files that I might put on my website now and in the future. So let's put that called JS. And right there, we're going to name this jQuery-1.4.2. And let's make sure that we make it JavaScript extension. 
So it says 1.4, let's make that 1.4.2.js. You can name you can name this JavaScript file whatever you want. You can name it poopoo.js if you want. But I'm going to name mine what the actual version of the jQuery library is here that I'm using. So I'm going to press save. And now that's all set up and ready to go. Now I'm going to take this code that I wrote to make this hide and slide happen. And all this code is going to be available in the... I'm going to put a link in the YouTube description area, which is now under the videos. You can expand it down. Actually, it uses hide and slide to expand that, to, uh, expand that content out. So if you go under the video YouTube, in the information area, there's little toggles there. You hit the toggle and you'll see the link to where I'm going to have this code available so you don't have to try to code this out in the video. You'll just be able to copy and paste all this code and grab it up and experiment away. So I'm going to name this file. Let's go to File, Save As. Let's go to Desktop, that same folder, My Website. This would be the root directory of your website. And I'll just name this index so say it was the home page of my website and let's make sure that's an HTML extension save it update links no okay now let me explain how the hide and slide code works here in relation to the jQuery library that we just set up So you'll see that you have your website. This is will be your website on your hard drive. Inside, you have your index file, and maybe you'll have a style folder or an images folder for your website. That would be sitting here in this directory. So you have the home page of your website and any other subfolders that go in there. And all I have right now is the JS subfolder. So now I'll explain to you the code, and we're done. Okay, and I just want to reiterate one more time that this hide and slide code is going to be under the YouTube video where you can hit the little hide and slide toggle button and see the video description and the tags and all that. That's what you want to see and you'll see the little link, active link sitting there you can click on and go and get this code. Now let me explain the code. Here we have a an HTML document that's just like many any other it could be the about us page in your site the contact page the home page whatever so here you see you have the HTML opening tag and then the head tag of the document within the head tag of the document we have the script source bringing in the library that is the 1.4.2 the jQuery library so you just run this line here to make sure that you're importing or bringing in the jQuery library for use. And then this next line sets up a JavaScript block here. And we can put some JavaScript code inside of that block. So the first thing we do inside of that block is we run the function below once the DOM, which is the document object model, is ready. And what the document object model is, is the way XHTML is laid out on the page. Okay, so when the document is ready and it's all read by the browser, what we'll do inside of that function is we trigger the function when clicking on an assigned element. Anything with the toggle class. So you'll see here, I have a span here called toggle. And here, let me go ahead and output this again. Let's go to File, Preview and Browser. Chrome or Internet Explorer, whatever you want to use. And you can see that here is content section one, show hidden container link there is the code within this first span. Here's content one. Well, the link is within that span because that's going to be the element that I want people to click on to expand the content down. So whatever element you want people to click on to expand the content down, you can put a span class toggle wrapped around it. And you'll notice that there's a div tag underneath it. And what this div tag has in it is any custom content I want, as much as I want, and any web page elements that I want to put in that div. 
that's going to be hidden. That's the stuff that's going to slide down and show to the user when they click whatever is in your span class toggle element here. So that's what this means. So we trigger the function when clicking on an assigned element which is the toggle span element. And you can have as many of those toggle spans on the page as you want. You see I have span class toggle right there span class toggle right there. If I wanted a hundred of those on the page it's no problem. When that when that is clicked we run an if and else statement to evaluate whether it's already hidden and we need to slide it down to show it or whether it's showing and we need to slide it up to hide it. So we say if this next element is hidden what that means is the next element after the target span. So if it's this span that I've clicked on, then that means the next element would naturally be this div in the in the document object model. So the next element after the target span is basically what this line saying. If this next element is hidden, then we slide it down using this line of code which means this next element slide down. Now here we're telling the jQuery library to run the slide down function with the value of fast as the variable variable being sent through that slide down function. Now if it happens to be down already, they've already clicked it and it's showing already, they slid it down. That means what we want this function to do is toggle it to slide back up or hide the content. Now what you can do is say this dot next element on the page hide and that tells the jQuery library file to hide that content. Now the way the content is hidden by default is this style tag here. You see the style block right there and inside we have hidden div class. So we have a class CSS class set up for hidden div and it has display none that's how we look at the page and we see nothing showing by default but when we click on something what, JavaScript, what the JavaScript library is going to help us do is then show and animate that content okay that's exactly how it works and you can see down in the div it says div class hidden div and you can have a hundred of those on the page too see both of my divs have a class of hidden div so nothing has a unique ID or anything. They just have class definitions. So basically that's the whole document. There's really nothing more you need to know. You you bring in your jQuery script, you make sure that's being brought into the page, and then you run this this JavaScript block right here, this set of functions inside and you experiment with it, you change whatever kind of content you want to have in these hidden areas whatever's in the span maybe you want a button and not a link to make the things go down or an image whatever you want okay so I'm going to put this code on develop PHP and then I'm going to upload this video to YouTube and in the description area of the video <laughs> you can toggle the hide function on YouTube to show you the link you go click on it grab the script up just make sure you ha you go to the jQuery site and grab the jQuery library. Like I said, if you have JavaScript library uh, or the jQuery library 1.3.2, it's still going to work for you just the same. But I would recommend getting the latest release of the jQuery library. So with that, you have everything you need to start making applications, kind of like the big boy sites do. Okay, so we hope you find this useful, and maybe you can get your hands dirty with jQuery. It's a nice substitute for Flash for a whole lot of things. You'll have better search engine indexing on the content within it as opposed to Flash and it'll be cross-browser compliant all the way across the board. As long as J JavaScript is running in that browser, it'll work everywhere.